an expedition down under the sea to explore and a once in a lifetime opportunity to view and experience the historical wreckage of the Titanic was too attractive for all those who could afford it even at the cost of their lives. Titan submersible of Ocean Gate took five people to experience this on 18th June 2023 but it never came back. Four days later, a robotic diving vehicle deployed from a Canadian ship discovered a debris field from the submersible Titan on the seabed some 1,600 feet from the bow of the Titanic and four kilometers beneath the surface in a remote corner of the North Atlantic. You cannot reach Titanic with just diving tanks. We go down there in a small submarine. We stay at the bottom for nearly eight hours. The ascent lasts about as long. So a dive can last between 10 to 12 hours. During the descent, you talk a lot. You talk about what you're going to do, the objective of the dive. And when we did our first dive to the Titanic, we had a shock when we reached the wreck because we arrived on the most beautiful part of the wreck, which is the foredeck, where you can see the anchor chains, the winches, which are still polished by the water and the sediments that the water contains. The winches are made of bronze, so they are shiny. You can distinctly read that they were made in Glasgow. I always remember that because you can see it very well. And so we were quite shocked when we saw this. And for 10 minutes, there was silence in the submarine. Iconic French deep diver PHS love for the deep ocean and Titanic cost him his life in the last expedition of Titan Submersible. And, you know, it's to be, you know, an explorer, in my opinion, that requires risk, you know, because you're exploring places that maybe have never been seen before. Um, and, you know, there's a reason why they haven't been seen before, because it's it's risky. Um, and I, I just, you know, I know that he was always aware of it, you know, uh, in terms of every time he went into any submersible, that there was risk. Um, but I think he was always, you know, uh, at comfort in terms of the risk he was taking um, because he just loved this, you know, part of his life so much. Arctic Horizon brought ashore debris from the Titan submersible. Ten days passed since the submersible descended into the ocean of the Canadian Newfoundland coast. It imploded around 13,000 feet underwater, close to the wreckage of the century-old submerged Titanic. Shattered fragments were pulled up by a crane off the horizon Arctic vessel and onto a truck. Video from the Canadian Broadcast Corporation showed what appeared to be the nose and other shattered fragments wrapped in white top of the submersible. Presumed human remains of the five crew on board were also recovered and brought to shore at the Canadian Coast Guard Pier in St. John's of Newfoundland. Well, it is a pretty hostile environment. It's two and a half miles, 3,800 uh, meters below the surface. Uh, it's cold. Uh, there's zero light after 1,000 meters. And um, basically, you're on your own. So once that cupola, that hatch on, on, on the surface closes, you're bolted into the vessel and it'll be a submersible like we used, or in this case, the Titan. Um, you're very much at the, at the risk of, um, of, of nature and your competence of crew and maintenance crew and integrity of the vessel. The Titan submersible had five people on board. Pakistani origin British tycoon Shahzada Daud and his son Suleiman. British billionaire and chairman of aviation company Action Aviation Hamish Harding. Former French Navy commander, deep diver, and a minesweeper Paul Henry Gargulet. Paul was also the director of an underwater research company that owns the rights to the Titanic wreck. And last but not the least, 
Stockton Rush, the founder and CEO of Titan's US-based operating company, Ocean Gate. All five of them died when the submersible imploded at an ocean depth of around 13,000 feet. The submersible was all set to be merged with five passengers aboard. But then they decided to wait for a few more hours. Titan submersible kicks off a two hour descent to the Titanic wreck, which lies at a depth of about 13,000 feet in the North Atlantic Ocean. Communications between the submersible and the surface vessel are lost an hour and 45 minutes after starting its descent. Submersible Titan fails to appear on the ocean surface at the time it was scheduled to return. And then began the search operation creating panic among the Ocean Gate team and the loved ones of those on board. Honestly, it's finding a, a needle in a, in a haystack. Um, first, you know, when you are above the surface, we can use um, GPS, we can use radar, we can use radio. There is nothing like that that we can use uh, below the sea because, simply put, the uh, electromagnetic frequencies, the electromagnetic waves do not propagate far under sea. So you can only rely on um, acoustic uh, sensors uh, to, to try to communicate and, um, and be aware of your environment. Two days passed by, a surge covering 10,000 square miles or 26,000 square kilometers yielded no results. So I want to reiterate, uh, this is a very complex search and the unified team is working around the clock to bring all available assets and expertise to bear as quickly as possible in an effort to solve this very complex problem. And then a Canadian military surveillance aircraft detected underwater noises and on 20th June search for Titan submersible continued in a remote part of the North Atlantic. We've had one of the worst springs in, on record, the worst spring since 1943, uh, which of course is, is bad enough being on land. It's absolutely terrible being 600 kilometers off our shores. We're talking, you know, 12 foot waves, uh, heavy fog, very difficult uh, search and rescue uh, conditions. The search continued despite all challenges. As hours turned into days, all dwindling hopes were lost of finding any of the five crew members alive. This morning, an ROV or remote operated vehicle from the vessel Horizon Arctic discovered the tail cone of the Titan submersible approximately 1,600 feet from the bow of the Titanic on the seafloor. The ROV subsequently found additional debris. In consultation with experts from within the Unified Command, the debris is consistent with the catastrophic loss of the pressure chamber. Upon this determination, we immediately notified the families. On behalf of the United States Coast Guard and the entire Unified Command, I offer my deepest condolences to the families. A renowned Titanic expert, a world record holding adventurer, 
two members of one of Pakistan's wealthiest families and the CEO of the company leading an expedition to the world's most famous shipwreck. All were declared dead on 18th June in the Titan submersible implosion. Karachi mourned the death of the science of Daud family. 48-year-old Shehzada Daud joined the ill-fated Titan on its last journey to celebrate Father's Day with his 19-year-old son, Suleiman. Dauds belonged to Pakistan's most prominent Maiman trader family. Dauds have been in the past of Pakistan, and the loss of the Shadi was the loss of the Shadi. We were very proud of them. They were also some families who were in the past of the day. और इस हादसे से पूरे पाकिस्तानी कौम जो है सदमे से दो चार है उसके कारोबार से कितने नौजवान रोजगार पे थे खातन रोजगार पे थी अल्लाह ताला उनके घर वालों को सब जमीन लता फरमाए वाल पाकिस्तान मोंड इट्स लॉस फ्रेंड्स रिमेंबर्ड एक्सपीरियंस्ड ट्रस्टेड फ्रेंच डीप सी एक्सप्लोरर पीएच एके पॉल ओरी नागुलेट I basically spent a month a month at sea each summer um working with him seeing seeing how he worked seeing how professional he was seeing how much he was respected um seeing how confident he was seeing how cool-headed he was um he was just consummate professional you know and um aside from that just very humble individual too Hamish Harding was an adventurer with three Guinness world records including the longest duration at full ocean depth by a crewed vessel. In March 2021, he and ocean explorer Victor Vescovo dived to the lowest depth of the Mariana Trench. In June 2022, he went into space on Blue Origin's New Shepard rocket. Hamish is a, he's through and through an explorer. Um, I, I don't know how he came to come on board. All of a sudden he just texted me and said, I'm going to the Titanic. I'm used to Hamish doing uh, elaborate expeditions. I mean, suddenly he's in space, suddenly he's at the South Pole, suddenly he's at the Mariana Trench. It does take quite a bit of preparation for these expeditions, but we sort of considered a Titanic to be one of the easier expeditions as Hamish has already flown to space and he has already dove down to the Mariana Trench, which is an eight hour dive to reach the bottom of planet Earth. This Instagram post by billionaire Hamish Harding is his last one. His enthusiasm for the deep dive remains immortalized as his last social post. Although Stockton Rush's background is in aerospace and technology, he founded Ocean Gate Inc. in 2009 to provide crewed submersibles for undersea researchers and explorers. Rush was the pilot of the Titan. That's the thing about Stockton, you know, he was a he was a talented engineer, he was a very intelligent person, he was a passionate explorer. But mostly he was a keen uh, risk manager. He was very well aware of the risks of uh, operating at these deep depths. And he was very committed to safety. And uh, every innovation that he made as an engineer or in the dive operations in his mind was really pushing two things. Number one is expanding the capabilities of humanity's uh, ability to explore the deep oceans, but also to ensure that it was done as safely as possible. Safety of the Titan submersible is right now shrouded with a big question mark. Titan was the submersible of Ocean Gate founded by Stockton Rush and Guillermo Sonlane in 2009. Since 2010, Ocean Gate has transported paying customers in leased commercial submersibles off the coast of California, in the Gulf of Mexico, and in the Atlantic Ocean. 
of all its deep dive expeditions, the visit of the Titanic shipwreck that lies 380 miles offshore and 3,800 meters below the surface was the most popular one. Adventure enthusiasts paid $250,000, which is more than two crores in Indian currency, for an eight days and seven nights expedition that included the deep dive in a cylindrical white pod about the size of a moving van. Titan was a 22 feet long vessel weighing 10.4 tons. The vessel also had a viewport on its one end for witnessing the scenic beauty of ocean life down there. Titan could accommodate five passengers at once, one pilot, one crew and three tourists, leaving no space for free movement. A modified Logitech F710 wireless controller was used to operate the vessel. For a long time, this structure and its operating functions were under scrutiny by the industry experts. The game controller available on Amazon for a mere $20 was responsible for its maneuvering. Its experimental design included a carbon fiber hull as its material, which many believe was fundamentally flawed. We may go into hazardous environments like hydrothermal vents or even to a wreck like Titanic or Bismarck or some of the other wreck sites which are dangerous from an entanglement standpoint or a collapse, a structural collapse standpoint. But you never worry about the vehicle, the platform that you're in, you know, and you certainly don't worry about implosion. There's never been an implosion of a vehicle with people in it. And so I think this, I don't want to say it blindsided the community because there was a lot of concern. And by the community, I mean people who operate subs and build subs for a living. There was a lot of concern about this outfit and this sub. A lot of concern, even to the extent that I wasn't involved in it because I was making Avatar 2 at the time, but a lot of them got together and wrote a letter to, uh, to OceanGate and said, you have to certify. You cannot take people down. It's irresponsible. And it could lead to catastrophe. Literally, the word catastrophe is in the letter. This criticism was a daily thorn on the side of this business for Stockton Rush. Expedition leader Rob McCallum repeatedly warned Rush about the possible catastrophe over emails around the time the Titanic expedition was being launched five years ago. March 2018, Rob McCallum wrote to Rush, you are potentially putting an entire industry at risk. Days later, Rush replied, I'm tired of industry players who try to use safety argument to stop innovation. McCallum putting an end to the mail trail wrote, Ironically, in your race to Titanic, you are mirroring that famous catch cry. She is unsinkable. Ocean Gate carried on with the expeditions despite criticisms. It was the last dive in 2021 that was possible. It was scheduled for 6 a.m. but was delayed for four hours because the batteries did not charge. When we finally lowered into the water, there was a big bang and the stabilizers on the right-hand side of the submersible became loose. Those are two meter long pipes in different diameters and pushed one into the other, which were fitted subsequently to stabilize the submarine in the water. They became Loose. German tourist Arthur Leubel was on the diving adventure to see the wreckage of the Titanic in 2021, with now dead Stockton Rush and Paul Ori Nagule on board. The feeling inside Titan can be nightmarish. It is about 2 meters long, 1.4 meter wide. Five people are sitting inside close together. You must not be claustrophobic. Feet tangled, 
It is that tight. There are no seats. You sit on your back. You cannot crouch. You cannot stand. You sit the whole time. Our dive took about 10 and a half hours. We were inside that capsule for 10 and a half hours because of all the repairs that had to be done. It is very narrow. You must not be frightened. You must not be claustrophobic. Otherwise, you will not endure it. He isn't the only one. Mexican traveller YouTuber Alan Estrada rode the Titan submersible in 2022. Hey guys, this is my first encounter with Titan, the only submersible of its type in the world that can hold five people. Estrada remembered the descent of the mission he participated in 2022 was almost aborted after losing contact with its surface support ship. What happened to us is that you lose communication, there is a tolerance period. If that communication is not recovered within that time, you have to abort the mission. You can see in my videos we lost communication more or less at a depth of 1000 meters. The tolerance time passed and we were already aborting the mission. It was risky. All deep ocean expeditions are risky and would always be so. It's a basic factor. If you put something in an environment where the force is going to destroy it, it is going to shatter. It's, it's like hitting an eggshell with a hammer, stepping on a can of beer and watching it explode. Something of that nature is what happened. While the criticisms go on, OceanGate is preparing for its next mission to shipwreck Titanic. And we said the same thing that people have said when there's been tragedies in space is, yeah, let's figure out what went wrong, let's learn lessons and let's get down there again. If anything, what we're feeling is an even stronger imperative uh, to continue doing this kind of exploration work. Uh, I think it's important for humanity and it's probably the best way to, to honor the five crew members who gave up their lives doing something that they loved. Investigations are on the way as is the effort to salvage the parts of Titan from deep under the sea. Danger of risking life to experience the unthinkable, the peace, the beauty of deep sea and the historical tragedy of the Titanic weigh far higher in attraction to undermine the risks. The lure of adventure and exploration has called humanity to challenge itself to try and defy gravity, to explore the universe in sky and in ocean. Death of five explorers and the catastrophic implosion of Titanic is not going to put a stop to it.